Hello, my name is Derek Malone. I am the university librarian at the University of North Alabama, and I am joined by Jennifer Pate, the Open Education Resources and Scholarly Communications Librarian, also from the University of North Alabama. We're pre presenting today, Leveraging Library Resources to Support Campus OER Initiatives at UNA. So I'm going to start us off today by talking about our Textbook Affordability Initiative. The Textbook Affordability Initiative, or TAI, was introduced in 2018. We are completing year three and getting ready to head into year four of affordable textbooks for our students. The TAI has three components, textbook reserves, OER, and library subscriptions specifically strategic library subscriptions to replace high cost textbooks or to be used as alternative resources. We're not gonna focus on the library subscriptions portion of that initiative today, but as an example, we purchase uh, streaming films through Canopy as an alternative to assigning those films for viewing to our students and having them purchase them through eBay or Amazon or something similar to that. I'm going to focus for my part of this conversation on our textbook reserves. We introduced textbook reserves for the first time in 2018, and that process has changed a little bit over time, but the goal is to have our textbook reserves for high volume, high enrollment courses, that have a high cost textbook, or that's the starting goal and what kind of what we've worked toward and now we're moving beyond. At first within this process, we were contacting the bookstore for textbook lists so we could identify with our course enrollments what some good textbooks to purchase would be. That has changed significantly with time. It is much easier for us to obtain those lists from uh, the departments themselves now. So twice annually, I will contact the departments and get a list from them uh, in, in October for spring and summer and in March for fall. That way we have a textbook list that we're able to compare against enrollment and also see what we have in current holdings and make de purchasing decisions about where we're moving forward with our textbooks. We also have a liaison program here at Collier Library and Information Services, and we're able to relay through that program different textbooks that we have available for each of our departments. Liaisons play a crucial role in this in uh, allowing the faculty members some knowledge toward the purchasing in our program and the students too, should they have questions over usage. This is a screenshot from our ILS COHA. And every time that we purchase a textbook for the Textbook Affordability Initiative, we place that record in COHA so it's discoverable uh, both by title and author, but also within our course reserves program. It's also a good reference point should that want to be shared by the faculty member of how to get to that resource. We have two textbook affordability initiative buttons that can go into a syllabus. One says textbook available. The other one says e-textbook available. We relay these to faculty members via liaisoning uh, to let them know that they can place this into their syllabus and the student can be aware that their textbook is either available or their e-textbook is available through us for free usage to them. So again, we're going into fall 2021, year four, of our textbook affordability initiative. This year we're buying uh, more kind of beyond the high enrollment classes at this point. We have quite a few of those in there already. If things move to a different edition, we want to have those updated within three years. So that's one recurring buy that could happen in this textbook affordability initiative. We also have some programs now that are fully available uh, through the TAI or through the TAI textbook initiative and OER. So we really, really want to move uh, forward on that and have more programs fully available for free textbook usage. That's our vision looking ahead. I'm going to turn it over to Jen to discuss OER. 
Thanks, Derek. In the next part of this presentation, I want to talk about the OER Working Group's program on campus. This past year has been a big year for growth of our OER program. We now have an official web presence, a logo, and we've had great success with faculty applying for funding to convert to OER. But first, I want to start with a brief note about why it's so crucial that we do this on our campus. Textbook affordability, as we all know, is a crisis in higher education. So we wanted to start our academic year with a snapshot of how our students felt about textbooks and how much they paid. We placed a series of questions on the whiteboard across from the main library desk. We asked, how much was your most expensive textbook? How much did you pay for all textbooks this semester? Did you know that we have textbooks on course reserve? And our final question was, what could you have purchased with the money that you spent on textbooks? The answers were pretty revealing. Multiple students reported that they spent $658 on a single textbook. One out of three students said they spent more than 400 total for the fall semester. And almost half the students who responded didn't know that the library had textbooks that they could check out. In the what could you have purchased column, we had responses ranging from the hilarious, one student said they could have purchased a lot of Taco Bell, to the incredibly serious, multiple students saying that they could have purchased food, or medication, gas, rent, and other necessities. So when we launched the program last year, we hope to have maybe five or 10 proposals over the course of the year. We launched in the middle of the pandemic, so we weren't expecting a whole lot. We have a rolling submission policy, so there's no deadline to apply. And we were thrilled when we received over the course of the past year, over 20 applications. Of those 20 applications, we were able to fund 19 total. That's shown in this uh, chart on the screen. And you can see that uh, we have a projected estimated cost savings for our students of over $200,000. As we roll into our second year of offering funds to faculty for moving their courses to OER or textbook affordability, we are focused on building a sustainable foundation. We know we need to raise campus awareness of OER and textbook affordability, so we've moved into the marketing of our program. We've been able to hire a grad student who is building up our social media presence. Here are screenshots from our Facebook, our Instagram, and now our Twitter. Um, she's also helping us map our curriculum across campus and then cross-referencing that to bookstore orders to find out who isn't requesting text. We're kind of reverse engineering our way to find out how much OER use is happening on campus that we don't know about because it didn't go through the OER funding program. We're in the midst of doing this now and look forward to data mining the results for a big picture look of OER and textbook affordability on campus. We wouldn't be this successful without the support of our amazing provost, Dr. Alexander. He has been an incredible OER champion, and he uses OER for a class that he actually teaches. He supported our course marking initiative, which is now in full effect. So all courses that have low or no cost text are clearly marked in the catalog, so students can make an informed choice when they're deciding what classes to take. And in addition, our faculty have been incredibly receptive. So as I wrap up this portion, I just want to give you a few quick snapshots of success from our recent marketing campaign, where we highlighted three of the instructors who received stipends to transfer their courses to OER or textbook affordability measures to reduce costs for their students. First, there's Professor Jason McCall. Jason is a poet and a faculty instructor in our creative writing program. He was able to use open access materials from the web and from library resources to not only save his students money, but to diversify the content of the material he was teaching in his creative writing courses. He highlights here that over half of his uh, authors that he used in his syllabus were female. He had a non-binary author and over half of the authors were minority authors. Sarah Franklin is a history professor, and she has converted both of her American history courses uh, to the American YAWP. She loves the ease that OER provides to both her students and for herself. And she also loves that it's not just easy, but it's saving them money. And finally, we have uh, Melissa Moore. She is a geology professor, 
And she's not only adopted OER, but she's also reviewed OER material for us in the OER program. She loves the flexibility of OER, being able to design her courses, compile the best resources. Um, and she's currently using a Lumen Learning platform for her Canvas course material, which is just fantastic. So this is just a quick snapshot of what Collier Library is doing to reduce the textbook burden for our students. We hope you found this presentation informative, and if you have any questions or would like any further information, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at jpate one at una.edu or to Derek at dmalone3 at una.edu. Thanks!